I wish I was clever. I don't know how to get this to go live on here. I'll have to let um, Elliot sort that out for me. Then you have to wipe it down. Sam, how are you? Well, thank Good. you. Good. It's lovely to have you back. Now, we're doing something new. Well, it's new to me. We've done this on Stone Street before, once, haven't we? I've been on once before demonstrating it. But this is it. brand new to me. This is called needle punching. Needle punching. Uh, what I'll do, let's, let's do all the, the selly things first, and then we can just spend an hour doing it, can't we? Oh, so welcome to Yarn Lane. Sorry, welcome to Yarn Lane. I forgot. <laughs> Same set. So we've still got the set dressing. Look, from, I mean, that's Emma. Oh, Emma, honestly, never mind. <laughs> uh, let's call it that one, Emma. That one's called Emma. Anyway, look, go on, go on, go on, go on. Right, the, this is what you can buy. Let's have a look at these. I'll just show you these, then I'll tell you how to buy them, right? So look, we've got the choice of three. We've got love. So right, we weren't ready to come back, you see. We weren't ready to come back. Love, hope, and charity. No, what's the last one? <laughs> joy. Joy. I'll just bring that into shot. There you go, joy. So now, if you would like to buy any of these, you need to go to the Yarn Lane website, right? Yarn Lane website is exactly the same a format as the same street. You press click on watch live, and you will see everything. There, there, there they are. There they are. They are available there, or you can read the call centre. It's a different number, remember, for the call centre. Different number for the call centre. Um, okay, so that's how you get, and you get in touch exactly the same way via Facebook Live in a minute, or via the website, or via the email. Uh, let's just get on, right? Let's get on. So, which one should I do first? Love. I did tell Hannah I loved her, and I've taken that back. I, I, I can touch it, but I'll just wipe it down afterwards, thank you. Uh, that was, that's Elliot's arm there. Yesterday we had hat. Oh, and that's my sat. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Sam. We're not ready today. Are we? Let me just put them. Come on, a sat nav. Not my sat nav. What's that thing called? My iPad's normally in the way. This is love. So what do you get in the kit? You do get a needle puncher. You do get. I know. We'll go through all this in a second. Green thread. You do get pink thread. Thank you, Elliot. You get lilac lavender. You do get. Oh, this is nice. You get. Yeah. Oh, there's more. I'll ask Sam all about this in a minute. You get black. Now, does this come already set up like this? Yeah. You also get a hoop. Now, is that linen or flax? Linen. Linen. Yeah. Uh, with the pattern already drawn on it. At, blimey, you get loads. And you get your instructions. <laughs> £24.99. £24.99. You get all of that. So I'll put that back in the bag. Get instructions. They're love. Have you sat and drawn all these? Yeah. I thought they're not a print, are they? No, I drew them. them all. Oh, you <laughs> yeah. must have been forever. Right, okay. We'll talk about the tool and, the, and yep. the thing in a minute when I've gone through all three of these. So that one's love, which is rather gorgeous. Are they primulas on there? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And a bumblebee. Yeah. Right, then I love this one. Now, my friend, uh, Her Royal Highness um, Rosemary in Warwickshire, she loved this because she loves snowdrops. Hope. Oops. Oops, 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 just wreck the joint while I'm here. So this is Hope. That's beautiful. What, sorry? Oh, loads of these in the baskets, the Hope one, right? Again, I won't get everything out, because you get the hoop and you get the instructions, you get the needle punch machine. You do get, th there's your thread. You only get three coloured threads in this one. That's it. You get everything, you get the tool and everything. So th the thing is, right, if you've never done needle punching before, you know when you start a new hobby, you kind of think, oh, I don't want to have to buy this, but... You only need to spend twenty four ninety nine, and you've got everything. And you can use the needle puncher over and over and over again. And then you can buy your linen, your thread. But I will find out what the thread is and everything in a minute when we get going. So put that in there. So that one is hope. And then last but not least, we've got joy to the world. Oh, I love daffodils. My friend um, Roxy, when she got married, her wedding flowers were daffodils. And we all had them in our buttonholes and within about 10 minutes they all started dribbling and oh they're awful wasn't a great choice again you get the hoop you do get the th oh these are lovely colors in here look and you get the black in there as well oh uh, what, what hang on what, what's going wrong here there we go there we go can you see that now and you get the tool the needle punching tool and you get the instructions they're gorgeous, aren't they? Just looking at them, it just makes me want to do it. Do you know what I mean? It just makes me want to start it. And I don't, I don't know anything about it whatsoever. 
So I'll take you through all the other bits and bobs in a minute because we've got glue guns and glue gun fillers and all that sort of stuff. Um, how are you, by the way? I've Very nice well, thank good. you. Good. It's how lovely about you? to see you. I'm good, thank you. So what is needle punching i don't even know what it is well it's a very old technique actually um that's been become quite popular recently so i was looking it up last night out of interest and they think it's been used since medieval times oh wow so that was really took me by surprise so almost like ta is it like a tapestry is yeah it like tapestry? almost like that in yeah. the style you get from it um and then more recently it's been it's kind of related to rug cooking so the traditional technique right. of of making rugs and the punch needle tool has developed from that. Right. So the idea is that you're making, using yarn to make stitches in fabric, which and mainly focusing on the loopy effect <laughs> when you're making rugs. That's so apt for today, <laughs> isn't it? Loopy effect. So, right. um, but because it's become more popular more recently and it's developed a lot, people have started to use it for embroidery and for artwork pieces. Well, um, also Hannah said that she'd say, seen somewhere, somebody she follows on Instagram, make stool covers or stool fronts covers, or something. cushion covers, bags, all sorts. But should they look absolutely... They are stunning. Yeah. I mean, if you look into it, it's just a really exciting hobby because you can be so creative with it. Right. So, but what I'm doing today is teaching you the basics and... Good, because I know I know nothing. <laughs> I read yesterday we were doing it and then I saw... Well, I didn't even see these yesterday. I only saw the kit yesterday. Oh, right. And I was like, oh, that, that looks really interesting, but I've got no idea. So we can start right from the right very from beginning. Right from the beginning. So if I've bought... Which one are you going to sample with? I'm going to start with hope if that's okay, okay. yeah no no with that's fine snowdrop. so if i've bought hope this will arrive in my house this little bag yeah with and now is, is is there everything in there to make that i don't need anything else at absolutely all absolutely everything you Perfect. need so you don't need to buy anything else Brilliant. it might be useful to have a glue gun but we'll talk about that later yes yes yes, but you, like, yes. you don't need to buy anything else you've got everything you need to get going you've got the instructions um, and all the tools, most importantly. Okay. Now, they didn't have a tool like this in medieval <laughs> no, times. No, this, <laughs> this is developed through people enjoying doing it for embroidery right. and, and realising that you can be more artistic with it. So traditionally, the technique was all about making loops and using those loops to make pictures and patterns. So, for example, with rugs, yes, with rug yes. making. But then um, people have come to realise recently that you can use the same tool to make flat stitches and, and oh, finer stitches, not just your big thick rug stitches. So when you talk about so, rugs, are you talking like like a shag pile rug? Yeah, that, exactly. Not a, not a Persian, a lovely no, Persian like rug. No, like a shag like pile a, rug, yeah. exactly. So it's kind of developed from that technique, but it's become more of a modern embroidery technique okay. these days. And when I came on last time, I demonstrated using quite a big punch needle and big yarn. Right. So this is fine for beginners, but if you've also, if you've done the previous project and you want to extend your skills a yeah. bit, okay. this is really good because it's a finer needle, finer yarn. You can get more detail with it, so you can be a bit more creative, okay. but absolutely fine for beginners too. So you've got your hoop. Right. Just move it to the right just a little Whoops. bit and then we can... That's it, perfect, <laughs> okay. perfect, perfect, perfect. So right. whenever you start punch needle, you'll need some fabric. It needs to be a fairly loose weave. Right. You'll need an embroidery hoop mm -hmm. or, or you can... But you get all this in the kit All this, this comes in the kit. Yeah. So I've done all the beginning bits for you. So I've traced on the design. I've put it in the hoop even. Yeah. And so the first thing you'll need to do is make sure it's really tight in the hoop and that will help it work well. Right. Yeah. If it's not quite tight enough, if it's loosened up in the post, you can even use a screwdriver to tighten it. So, so if, if it's gone a little bit baggy, if you, it's a bit you baggy, need to just, and you literally do that by just pulling it, do you? Yeah, so it? you stretch it out of the sides like so. Right, okay. And then you can twist it with your finger and thumb, but you can also use a screwdriver to, to make really, it really tight. tight. You're looking for sort of drum tautness. Yeah. Okay. The tighter it is, the easier it will be okay, to brilliant. get good results. And then you get your tool. So I brought one in a package to show you. So this is your, this is a really brilliant tool. Yeah. This is called an interchangeable punch needle. Of course it is. <laughs> um, it's a fine one. As I say, last time I was on, I demonstrated with a much wider needle. Yeah. We'll talk so, about those later. Though, yeah. Last one. Um, but this one is finer. So this is completely different. Right. Quick question. If I've got children in the house, are you saying needles is a sharp? Is there sharp? These to ones it? are sharper than the ones we used before. So okay. I mean, children can use them just under supervision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. much like you would with a normal sewing needle. Okay. Perfect. So yeah. it is usable for children, but yeah, they are sharp and sharp for yourself as well. So do yeah. take care. So it comes with three interchangeable needles, which come in these bits. <laughs> right. So you can change these according to the size of the yarn you're using. 
So I am using a four ply today, and that's what you'll get in your kit. These little balls. Is of it four just ply. is it knitting yarn then? Yeah, this is what I would use for crochet. Oh, okay so then. Okay. You can use embroidery floss, and you've got finer needle tips for that. So it, but you could, the brilliant thing about punch needle, if you knit or crochet, it's a great stash buster. Because well, I was going to say, you your always, must have all these bits left over yeah, on the ball. Yeah, exactly. Like so it's perfect for anyone who likes sewing and likes knitting or crochet because you can use your yarn up. Okay, so just tell me <laughs> again, what are the three needles then? So these are three different sizes. So they come in the in the kit, you get this, yeah. this pack, and you've got the one in the needle and yeah. then two different sizes. So one's for, they're like for different fineness. Exactly. So one's for embroidery thread -ish. One's for embroidery floss type yeah. thing. One's for a roughly four ply. Yeah, which is what we're doing today. Which is today. what we're using today, so that's the middle size. Yeah. One and one's for double knit, which so it's slightly bigger. Oh, yeah, I thought four ply would be fatter than double. Shows how much. No, I no, it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's a, a technically an eight ply double knit. So okay, just okay. to give you the idea. Right. But you can play about. I mean, any odds, odds and ends you've got, if you've got some of that crochet cotton, and just play about with which one it fits in easier. Okay. So there's no hard and fast rules with it. And they're easy to put in and out these chains, yes. these needles. So. I've already got this one set up with the med medium, <laughs> I can't say it today, middle size, yes. medium size needle. Yeah. Okay, so it comes with the bigger one already in it, so you're going okay. to need to change it before you so start. It, so if we're doing this one at home, we need to change the needle yes. straight away to the first middle. first thing you'll need to do is change it, which yeah. I have written in the instructions, but also oh, okay, you'll have this YouTube clip. Yeah. So to change it, you've got this screw on the front here. Yeah. Unscrew that. Right. There's a bit on the end here which comes off. Yeah. Oops. Oh, you're brilliant. And then you can just remove oh, it comes the inside down that of way. it. Yeah. And then you just pull this bit off. And that's the bit you replace oh, with your other size of needle. And all of the ones in these kits, they've all got the three sizes, they've haven't they? They've all got the three sizes. Yeah. So the brilliant thing is once you've done this project, you've got this tool to make lots of yeah. other pictures yeah. with. Okay, so I'm actually gonna put this one back in. So now, so you, you're putting the, the medium. This is the medium, medium one. one. Yeah. So you pop it in, it's yeah. got two little slots there. Yeah. Pop it in there. So there's only one way it can go it. in, really. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of instinctive. And then you push this back into your punch needle. Yeah. Just do a few turns of this screw bit here. To does it matter where the does Yes. <laughs> let's oh, put this, okay. put this top back on here. Yeah. Right, so this, the other lovely bit about this punch needle yeah. is you can change the size of the loops that you get. Right. So if you unscrew that a little bit and move it down, this gets shorter. Oh, yeah. And if you push it back up, it gets longer. Right. So if you want to make loopy stitches... Which is how it all started. Yes, yeah. exactly. Then you can make this... Uh, longer right so you can just choose which size of, of stitches you want in terms of the loops right so if you have a look on the back of one of those uh, embroidery hoops there you'll see what it looks like oh, do you put it that way up on the you? reverse so you'll oh, sorry, see they, uh, which way we're we going yeah <laughs> Doing that shows you the loopy stitches that you get on the reverse. Even the reverse is gorgeous exactly. though. Exactly. So the brilliant thing about punch needle is you can use the flat stitches, which I've got on the front of that picture. That one, yeah. 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 And the loopy stitches. Now, if I want my finished thing to look like that, am I able to do that? Yes, absolutely. You can choose which stitches you want to use for it. I mean, that's beautiful. Yeah. But I prefer... Personally, I prefer yeah, that kind of so bobbly bit on the back. It's nice, there. isn't it? Yeah. Because you're really good to oh, I hope your writing will be the wrong way around if you do well, that. Well, what I would do if I were, if I, I'll show you actually Oh, yeah, in a no, minute, no, that's but yes, you me, can absolutely me, do on. that. You can plan that out. You can yeah. think, well, I'm going to do, and you can even think I'm going to do some really long loops for, let's say, the centre of the daffodils if you buy the joy one, yeah. and some smaller loops for the petals. So you, that's the really fun thing yes. about this. It's a brilliant punch needle. So that's your punch needle, a little guide to getting yeah. started with that. Okay, so you've got your punch needle, you've got your hoop ready, you've changed it to the middle needle with yep. width. Next, you need to thread it. So your punch needle comes with two threaders like this. Now, you'll probably, I don't know how clear you'll be able to see them. Oh, there you are. They're really, really narrow pieces of wire. Let me just show you, because when you open up your packaging, you might even wonder what they are. So if I just open this one, they're tucked in here. Oh, so don't throw the packet away. <laughs> don't throw the packet away. And they look, you know, think, what are those things? But yeah, what are those things? <laughs> what are those strange things? You get two. Right. And you get these little stickers on the end of them. So these are the threaders. Right. And are they like enormous needle threaders yes, then? Yes, yeah. they are exactly like that. 
And you can see what happens to them when you've used them a few times. Yeah. <laughs> they get really wonky. Now, I have swapped the sticker for a button for two right. reasons. It makes it easier to hold. Yeah. And it also makes it easier to find. Yes. Because if you're sitting on the sofa doing it, you put it down and then you just cannot see it anywhere. Uh, uh, I speak from experience. Yeah. <laughs> so put a button on the end or a bead or something. It will help you to find it. So that's what they are. And the sticker falls off within minutes. Yeah. So, OK. So that's your threader. So I'm going to start, it's good to have a kind of a plan of action when you're doing a punch needle. So I'm going to start with the white petals of the snowdrop. Right. So with the threader, you're going to push it down. Now you can see, it's quite good to show you with this one because this is really what they get like after a couple of uses. Yeah. Push it down from the tip of the needle all the way through the centre, because this is hollow. Right. And out the other end. Oh. So you've got the loopy bit coming out the other end yeah. and the sticker or the bit that you've put the your button, button yeah. on is at the top here. Okay. Now sometimes... It does look like an instrument of torture it now, does like some Game lethal, of Thrones. Doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> sometimes this bit can get caught inside the punch needle yeah. and it doesn't come out the end here because there's a hole on the top there. Right. If so, if that happens, this bit comes off. So it's easier to just get it through. So yeah. it's a little tip. <laughs> just like, just be a bit, bit, not forceful, but just kind of waggle it a bit. Exactly, it, through, yeah. it will, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm going, what's I'm going with the petals, so white. So then you get the end of your yarn, pop that through the loop, and then pull your other end, your button or your sticker end, and it comes out the front, right. the top of the punch needle, where you've got your actual needle. But you only want single, you only want single thread coming out. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you've got a single thread. So this is my four ply yarn. Yeah. And then you don't need very much at the tip here. So you right. can just pull the ball end down there. Right. And then you've also got this eye on the needle here. I don't know if you can see that well enough, but there's what, a like little a, like hole. A, like a normal needle, like yeah, a hole to thread exactly. it through. Yeah, exactly. And so you're going to need to get the yarn through that tiny little hole so you're going to push your needle thread up whoops i'm gonna to have to hold it nearer to my eyes <laughs> <laughs> through there. put the loop put the yarn through the loop there so you've got two bits that you're threading it through you're threading it through the center of the needle and out through the eye of the needle right. there so you bring it right the way through and then once it's through single thread you then take it through the eye of the needle exactly okay, okay so you're ready to punch now <laughs> yeah <laughs> finally <laughs> don't tell hannah that she's, <laughs> she's in one of those moods today <laughs> so you've got these little balls in your kit so before you start i'd really recommend pulling a few strands of the yarn off so you've got like a bunch of yarn here right because this bit coming out the top of your punch needle needs to be loose so if you are used to um crocheting or knitting or used to needing yarn to be tight this is the opposite oh it okay really loose coming out the top here and just before we get started i'm going to adjust the length of this punch needle so of the needle here i want it to be between about three and five is that in the instructions Yes. Yeah. So I unscrew that a bit, pull it down. It doesn't need to be too loopy because I'm mainly using flat stitches. And then just twist it and tighten it up again. Right, OK. OK. Oh. So, ready to start. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to outline the shapes and then I'm going to fill them in afterwards. Okay. So to get started, put your uh, needle where you want to start. Can, now, we go a bit, so can, we, can we go a bit closer than that, Emma? And you just need to move your, I don't want to miss this, so you move your hand to the right, perfect. Is that okay? Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay. There, there, there. Now, I've, I've paused in this position because this is really important. Right. The tail of the yarn is going to be behind the work. Yeah. And the punch needle is leading us forwards. So this seems a little bit contradictory to what I would normally do. To me, this looks like a fountain pen. Yes. So it's the open part that is leading forwards and doing the outline. Yes. Not the cloak, not the part behind with the yarn coming out. Of right. it. So it's really important. If you're going wrong, make sure you're holding it the right way. Yeah. So Can you unpick it if you go wrong? Yes, okay, easily. Right, yeah. Right. So once you've got your starting point, push your punch needle through your fabric. Yeah. And I've got, I don't actually even need that long a tail, but I'm just going to turn it over and pull it so the tail comes out on the wrong side. So it's like when you're doing embroidery or gold work or something like that, you're just pulling it through to the back. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then you pull your, so I've pushed it down so that the handle of the punch needle is right up against the linen there. Yeah. So then I'm going to pull it back up through, but don't lose contact with the fabric. So the tip of your punch needle needs to stay 
pretty much in contact with the fabric the whole time. Right. And then push it forward just a couple of little uh, little sort of holes in the linen. Yeah. And push it back down again. Right. To the handle point. Yeah. Can you just move to your right a tiny, tiny, Ooh, tiny bit? Sorry. Thank you. No, 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 oh, don't apologise. There we go. Please there we go. I can see now. Right, OK. So, so you're not pulling it right out of the so linen. You don't want to pull it right out. You need the, the trick is to keep your punch needle tip in contact with the fabric at all times. Right. So if you, I'll show you. If you pull it out, I'll just do a few more to make sure they're secure in there. Right. So if I pull it out like so, and I get a longer look, where well, you can see already it's coming undone. Yeah. And then when I try and push it down, that's not going to stay. Right. So if that does happen, don't panic. Pull the end of it that's coming out the top of your punch needle until you've got just a nice tight stitch on the bottom there, like so. Keep your tip of your needle in touch with the fabric yeah. and push it back down through. Right. So. And how's it staying? How's it staying there? So the loops are catching in the fabric and literally by catching in the fabric being held in, there's no knotting and the more loops you make, the more they hold each other in. So you need to get as close, as close as possible. Yes. I mean, this is cotton, so you don't, you don't want to get too close. I'll show you as I fill it in. Yeah. Because it will split the cotton. Oh, OK. But the, the more stitches you get, the more they hold themselves. And right. you'll see, because if you want to undo it, it's really simple. Is my head in the way? So no, no, no. We moved the camera to the... <laughs> Um. So you're going all the way around. Try to space them evenly. Now, can you see my yarn here has gone underneath my hoop? Oh. That's going to catch if I'm not careful. So just let's make oh, sure yes. there's lots okay, of okay. open yeah. yarn there. So I'm just going to finish outlining that. No, th I was about to say, I've seen, um, there's, I don't know what his name is. There's a man on Instagram, a sewing man, and he does hoops like this, and they're, oh, they're slightly right. naughty, the pictures he's done. <laughs> but I don't know how he did them, so it must be done like Could this. Could be, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's really becoming popular at the moment. Yes. Definitely something that um, you'll see more and more of, I think, over time. So I've done the outline. Right. Um, and now all I'm going to do is fill it in. So I'm going to work, look, I've caught my thumb there. You've got, I'm going to work from the inside. So moving along where I've got my outline. So you're just echoing that exactly. row that you've done. Exactly, using the outline to guide me, keeping the stitches close together, but not too close. So I've made those ones a little bit far apart. So I'm just going to... So if you want to unpick it, you take, take the needle out, out and take then just the pull the thread out, from the end. Pull the end of the yarn that's coming out of the top of your punch needle and then start punching again. You can see I've got these little holes here. Yeah. So if I wanted to, I could just really carefully the blunt end of a needle, scrape across there and it'll close them up. Right. Okay, and then I can start that bit again. So I want them to be a bit tighter. Okay. That's better. So put them right next to each other. Well, I imagine once you get used to this, you end up going really you fast. You do. You this. really get the hang of it. And you know, it's quite a nice thing to do on your lap or sitting at a well, table. Well, I was about to say, <laughs> if you're doing it on your lap, do you need a tray between you and the needle? Because well, you don't want to be stabbing it into your knee, do you? <laughs> Just be careful when you're holding it that, you, you, that you're not um, holding it too close to where the needle's coming through because it will catch you if you're not careful. <laughs> well, that would be the first thing I do. Just though. like a normal sewing needle. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. hurt. but So you will get the hang of that. So you're just going around and around. Now, you can do this much neater. <laughs> Because you're, you're the expert. <laughs> because you'll have it at the table or on your lap and you'll be able to see it a bit yeah. better, whereas I'm trying to keep it... The blind. Right. Yeah, to show you under the camera. Oh, and can I just read? You've got so many messages, right? <laughs> Fabulous Sam taught me punch needles during the first lockdown. Her kits are fantastic, says Amanda. Lindsay says, lovely designs and kits. You and John are looking very glamorous today, Ooh, Sam. That's thank Lindsay. You. <laughs> Sam is the best teacher at all things crochet, punch needle and crafts. Her kits are fabulous from Terry Ann. I've been looking forward to this, says Claire. I have one of Sam's kits and haven't started it yet. Oh, Ruth says, that looks lovely, Sam. <laughs> Catherine says, Cam si Sam's kits are always brilliant. Such clear instructions. Everything you need to get started. Tina says, Sam is a tal <laughs> talented teacher and so creative with the kit she puts together. Highly recommend her and Adventures in Crafting. That was Tina. And Julie says, beautiful designs and kits. Sam, you were always fantastic oh well, blimey so much, everyone. Nice? How lovely. right <laughs> right so i hope kit sold out oh oh sorry i thought you said it gone uh, almost gone but i hope kit has almost gone okay so you're going to continue and as i say 
To be quite honest, ideally, I would hold this up nearer to my face. Yeah, but you can't, you're on telly. <laughs> Which I can't do, <laughs> to show you. So are, these, my... <laughs> are these ones here meant to be for people? Like, is this one of the, one of the ones? Oh, oh was... yes, it is, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. I was going to make it. I was going to start making it, but I won't. <laughs> How much is it? <laughs> 20? Actually, I won't do Hope, because that one's almost sold out. Maybe I'll look at one of the other ones. <laughs> I do need more love in my life. Where's love? <laughs> right, carry on. So, as I say, you can do it neater. You, honestly, you can do it neater because you'll be able to get in here with your face. <laughs> you're I'm just so, saying that now, aren't I'm you? Because so you're embarrassed by how badly you've done. <laughs> so, oh, you can see I'm filling this in. I'm going to stop there. I've filled in one petal. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then you're going to fasten it off on the back. Okay, how do you do that then? So, when I taught people how to get started with the beginner's kit we did a different type of fastening off yeah but um i just want to because this is so fine i want all my ends to be clearly on the back so i turn it over pull the yarn here so can you see the yarn coming out of a punch needle i'm going to pull that a bit yeah and then i'm going to snip it leaving Ooh. a little end coming out of the punch needle yeah and then pull it so we it haven't knotted out. it then no need to knot no need to knot at all with punch oh, okay. needle. So you've got the flat stitches on the front and you've got the loopy stitches on the back. Right. So um, as you said, you could choose to do it the opposite way if you want, which I'll talk to you a little bit more about yeah, in a minute. Yeah. But so that's so then I would do the next petal, the following petal and start to fill in the different okay. shapes. So that's how that's kind of an introduction to how to get started. Right. We've got a photograph to show you, first of all. Hi, Samantha and John and team. This is a picture of my first try at Punch Needle. I've wanted to do this, the writing's so tough. I've <laughs> wanted to try this technique for ages and after Samantha, Samantha, is that what you call yourself in your classes? It's Samantha <laughs> no. first brought it on air. I just had to have a go. It's brilliant and addictive. I can imagine it being addictive. Currently whizzing through crochet projects so, so, I'm sorry, I'm not this bad at reading normally. It's just so little. So I can use my leftover yarn. Give it a go, John. Who's that from? Adele. Adele. Uh, which, well, okay, so which one should I buy then, Hannah? Okay, I'll do it. I'm going to, you keep going. You keep okay. Going. Well, I was going to move on to Joy next anyway, so that's great. You're moving on to Joy next, yeah. are you? Well, actually, I know, I know, I know. Oh, no. If I could take, jo I could take the one you've already started. Oh no, I'm not allowed to touch it. No, you no, I'm not allowed to touch it. I'll carry on with this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. So, and, and and these little messages. I brought this book with me to show you. Oh, because I love the idea. This is a book called The Language of Flowers. How old's that book? Well, it's it looks older than it is. It was oh, okay. written in 1913, but it's been printed. Yes, but it gives yeah. you a meaning for every single flower. Well, oh. there's probably some it doesn't, but and I love the idea that flowers can send a message, which is where oh, yes. what inspired this. Okay, then. So what okay. does daffodils? If I send daffodils well, to somebody, what does that mean? Well, I've I've kind of been creative because I put joy. Yes. I think in here it means constancy. Regard. Oh, that's not very attractive, <laughs> is it? I love daffodils. So, you see, but. yeah, so I was a bit creative with my words. But right. Snowdrop definitely means hope. Oh, so, does it? Yeah, so in this book. And primulas? Now, mean well, grow I've, like weeds. I've put love, but let's. So, this, I just wanted to show you because this is what inspired me. Primula means diffidence, apparently. Oh, okay. So I just my dream, when was it printed? 1913. Yeah. They're not going to go, you know, sexy and you know, things <laughs> exactly. like that, is it? So I just love the idea that you could um, pass on a message through a flower, and so. Oh no! I it's like roses. If you send roses somewhere, red roses, love, yellow exactly. roses, friendship, yeah. and all that. Yeah. And I thought with the lockdown and everything, it might be nice to send one of these to somebody. And oh send yeah. A well, no, um, Emma's literally just said she's going to buy one and make it for a friend who's just bought a flat. Oh, how lovely! And she's going to like as a house housewarming present. Yeah, that's really lovely. Right. So on with the daffodils. So um, I've started this one. Yeah. I've done what I showed you with the snowdrop in that I've outlined the petals and filled them in. And then I've left the centres of the daffodils, right. the trumpety part, yeah. to show you how you can use your loops. Oh, okay. So it's a different sort of stitch. Exactly. Yeah. So um, for yours, John, if what I would do, because you're, so I've kind of got to the stage where I've um, done the petals and by doing the petals, I've created an outline on the back. <gasps> Look at the back. <laughs> Look, at, I love that. <laughs> Is that got a name, that back bit? Is it, is it, is well, it? I don't know. I call it loopy stitches. Yes, well, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> but there's just something it's really uh, tactile, I like textures. I love, isn't it? I love the front. I do yeah. love what yeah. these create. But there's just something about that it's sort of almost comforting, the, the yes. kind of yeah. fullness on the exactly. back. You know the front's gorgeous and yeah. neat, but there's something about that that makes you want to go. Ooh. I like that as well. But anyway, and also, I like up. combining them. Yes, yeah. So, with these daffodils with the ones you've got there the sample i made there it's yeah. all flat on the front okay the, the sample on this one so all of those stitches are flat stitches is emma there sorry don't let elliot <laughs> put you off when we're live on the show here we go so that's lovely and smooth there so those are all but made you're going to do the something front, different with but then this i was one. having a play about so the great thing with punch needles you can be really creative so i've done the petals in flat stitches yeah and then i thought well i could show the stamens if that's the right word the yeah, bit in the, the trumpet in the trumpet yeah. trumpet um by using fluffy stitches. So I've done one right. and I did that from the other side. Yeah. So I'm going to do one or two more to show right, you. Okay. So you're going to thread your needle again. So again, you're going from the top, push your needle threader through. Yeah. When you, when you come to do, we're, we're bound to do another needle punching, aren't we? When you do it next time, will you bring a kit for me that we don't, because obviously these are going to have to be sold to people, aren't they? And I don't want to be opening these and taking people's yarn out and everything like that. But can I ever go next time? Of course, that would be I was, brilliant. I was just about to take your Hope one, but um, I'm not allowed to touch the things that you've yeah, been touching. Yeah, that would be, I'm but next time, a bit. If I'm on, next time you come Absolutely, in doing something like I'd this. Absolutely, I'd love yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, so I've threaded it through there, and now I'm going to thread it through the eye of the needle. So, put them there. The thing is, Emma's saying as well, what a lovely, not not the finished thing, but actually the whole kit is a lovely present yes. for somebody who you know may be being at home on their own or, you know what I mean? Because a exactly. lot of us are having to live on our own yeah. during the lockdown yeah. and, and it's, you know, it's not a nice time. But how lovely to buy one of those somebody and drop it off for them and they, they, they can then make something out of and it. But just, also it's, it's, it's mindful. It's such an like. achievable hobby yes. as well yeah. because it, it's just, you can do it. I mean... As I, I said to you at the beginning about um, keeping it tight in the hoop, making sure you've got this bit coming out, the top of your needle is loose, yeah. and keeping your needle tip in contact with the fabric, those are the three top tips for yeah. making it work. So yeah. if you're struggling, one of those things is going wrong. So that's, you know, yeah. once you've got the knack of it, then you're off. Yeah. So anyone can do it, it's really achievable. So I'm going to go from the back now to make these loopy stitches. Right. So turn it over. Um, if you want to do the whole thing loopy, what I would do, just going back to you was saying that's what you like, yeah. I would outline it first in, normal. in flat stitches yeah, and, then yeah. and then turn it over yes. and put the loopy stitches in. But because I'm doing a combination, now you can see it's looking really busy on the back here, so I'm going to have to use my finger to push back some of these loopy yeah. stitches. You need to design an Easter chick oh, that would be done great. with the loopy. That would be great. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? Absolutely. And so I'm just pushing through, and if you, I turn it over, you can see these loops coming through. And so you don't oh. have to be too particular way, about where your loops are going to be, but again, I'm using the outside as a guide yeah. and then working inwards. Okay, so be aware, I can see this is getting caught on my fabric again. It's going to pull the stitches out, so pull that longer. Could you drop it so the ball's on the floor? Well, um, or does that pull often, attention too yes, much? Yes, it does pull attention too tight. So often with crochet or knitting, you would do that. But with punch needle, don't. Oh, Try okay. and keep the ball up on oh, the no, same surface. Oh, no, because Miss Marple does that when she's I, doing I her knitting. I do it with my crochet. I just oh, okay. throw it on the floor and I use that to help with the tension. Have you not got pets, then? <laughs> I have, but they kind of steer clear. <laughs> I've got an old cat who's not too oh, bothered anymore. Oh, OK. So, um, but with this, you really need to have your ball of yarn up on the same level as your work. So if you, so pretend we're not in the studio now and you're sitting in your armchair or take your dining room table, the ball stays on the dining room table, but you sit with it closer to your face. I though, would hold it. Just be, I mean, you can see, I'm, you know, my eyesight is yeah. not so good as it used to be. So just for me to be comfortable with seeing it, I would hold it up more than yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're in an armchair, the same sort of thing. Exactly. But where would your ball of wool be? On your so lap? If it's an armchair, on my lap. Okay. Yeah. And as close as I can get the ball of wool to the piece of work, yeah. really. Because by doing that, um, you're going to help with this looseness here. Yeah. So 
Sometimes I turn it over and just get <gasps> guided by that. The thing is, it's also, you're going to do this in an afternoon, aren't you? It's really quick. Yeah, a couple of hours. And that's, again, if you crochet on knit and you're used to projects taking quite a long time, this is really refreshing. Yeah. It's just really nice to have a change and do something that is quick and effective and looks really pretty. So I'm going to call that finished for now. Again, <laughs> you can take a bit that more bit time. Now, yeah. So I've caught a little bit of cotton there where I wasn't hurrying. Right. So uh, where I was hurrying and okay. not being careful. So if you have a piece of yarn coming up that you don't like the look of, get a blunt end of a needle and just push it back down. Or even with this one, is a blunt needle because it's a darning needle. Yeah. Just push it back and through just push to the it back. back oh, that's like when you get a hole in the jump, not a hole in the jumper. Exactly looping your jumper and just pushing it through. Exactly home, yeah. the same. You can use the ends of your scissors. And the other thing you can do is you can look at the back of it, try to find roughly where that loop is and pull, pull those bits through. up. Yeah. So if you can kind of tweak it, you can finish it off and you can even, it's not going to come undone, you can even trim it. Last case, <laughs> last resort, there we go. Perfect. So you've got the fluffy bit in the center yeah. there. Okay. Gorgeous. Right, so I was, I'm going to do the same with this bit and then I won't do that now though, I'll let you think yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly the same technique. So I'd start from the outside, you can see it looks really busy on the back. So again, pull back those stitches, find the center and start pushing back in fruit from this side to make these fluffy bits in the middle of the okay, daffodil. Okay, lovely. Okay, so I'm gonna do the lettering next. Right. So get some black. You've got a little bit of black in your kit. Thread your needle. <laughs> this is where I'm, I'm like this on the surface trying to find my needle better. <laughs> Thank goodness I put it on a button. Okay. So push through from the tip. It's a reminder of how to change your yarn. Would you would you have three of those punch? What are those things called? The punching machine thing? Could you have three already threaded up in the three different colours? That, that would you're be using? very good. <laughs> that would be great. If you, again, it would make the actual making of the piece of work well so much I, I more if you just doing one for fun in the afternoon then you don't need to but if you've got to make 10 for like 10 friends or something yeah quite exactly good just well if you buy one of every kit you end up with three of these so you can do that oh actually yes <laughs> Hannah was saying if you buy three kits you've got three tools anyway haven't you exactly so you buy one of each exactly. for, to put on the wall or whatever yeah okay so i'm threading it my black in so so you can basically do Anything. If you buy these kits, you've obviously got these flowers drawn on the linen. Yeah. But once you get going, you could draw any design on your linen. Yes. And just go for it with exactly. family crests or names <laughs> exactly. or anything. Exactly. Anything you like. Be really creative. And I think, you know, I've put a bit of linen in there, but anything that's got a fairly loose weave, denim I'd like to have a go with, oh. anything like that. Would calico work? Was calico I, too close? I, I, no, I think it would be with a fine punch needle, yes, I yes, think yes. that would be fine. Mm. Um, cushion covers, that's something I'm yet to explore, but I'm desperate to do. So a plain cushion cover, you know, you can make all sorts of pictures yeah. on it. So I've got my black ready to go. It's through the centre of the needle and the eye of the needle. So for the lettering, I'm literally going to follow it in the same way as if I was writing the word. Right. Oh, OK. So for joy, I'm starting at the beginning of the J here. Yeah. Push the needle through until the handle meets the fabric. Turn it over and I'm just going to pull that tail so it's on the back of it. Whoops. Pull it back up. And remember I said do try really hard not to lose contact with the fabric. Yeah. And then push your needle through forward a couple of little holes in the fabric and push it back down through so this linen if you look really carefully at it if you can get your head close enough mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you can see it's got a few little holes in it. it's got little holes in it at intervals yes the way it's woven so you can use those holes to guide your stitches right so then i'm coming back up going through it forward another similar distance couple of holes and back up again so you're just punching as if you're writing the letter Claire's saying, can you make a candlewick bedspread like this? Oh. It'll take you a while. Yeah, think, it? You sounds could. fun. That's taking you back, isn't it? She <laughs> must be older than me. <laughs> you can do anyth anything that you can sew or crochet or knit. You can do a similar effect with this. I saw some someone had shared on, I think it was Instagram the other day, a photograph of a lady wearing a jacket made from punch needles. Oh, Hannah's, Hannah was mentioning that earlier. And I was really like, oh, that looks amazing. Obviously, it's quite sturdy because you've got lots of yeah. um, yarn in it, but it looked fantastic. 
Oh, she saw slippers. Well, some nice slippers. Yes, right. absolutely. Sorry, carry on. So I finished the J. So yeah. I'm going to turn it over because I want my end to be on the back. Just pull this Through. slightly out. Get my scissors. And snip it. That's it. And then the dot above it, you can do one. Just one? Just one little loop. So do you never... You never, like, on some embroideries, you'd finish the J and then you jump across to the O. You don't do that. You, you can, but it would look joined up. So, because you're, you're going to... But you can, but you'd obviously... Oh, no, because no, there you're has on the to be a thread going it, across. There'll be a thread towards, going yeah. across, yeah, so yeah. Um, you can't, like, I can't suppose with a needle, the you'd back. move your needle across yeah. the back, wouldn't yeah. you? But you can't do that, but you can make it look joined up. Yeah. There's nothing to stop you bringing that J across like so and joining yeah, it. Yeah, if yeah, if, you, if you're actually doing someone's writing, if, you, you know, if you've taken my actual signature and they are joined oh, together, yes, you can carry Oh, yes, that would be great. So just pull that out. And that's all you do, really. So this is just a single layer of stitches for the what, lettering. Yeah. But it's so effective. I love being able to do the wording in it. Yeah, because the other thing is, lots of people are going, oh, I'm not creative enough to draw my own. You can go to the internet. Absolutely. And just co copy a... No, no, not copy other people's <laughs> designs. But you Be can take a picture of a flower. By... But, yeah. but no, no, if, if people who think, oh, I can't draw, I can't draw. There are loads and loads and loads oh, of things definitely. on the internet. And there's loads just... of free things out there anyway. Yes, Absolutely. Yeah. Or even... Um, from a book, if you've got a favourite book. I mean, I collect these kind of botanical books that I was showing yeah. you. Anything from that, you could trade. Anything you trace. Trace it off, yeah, that's what yeah. I meant. You could trace it onto yeah, that, yeah. exactly. Now, would it be too much if, not on this, because obviously you haven't got the yarn, but I'm thinking, what happens if you fill the whole of the background in as well? Like, so if you've drawn a flower, like, yeah. like that one, and then you wanted, like, um, a sky or something, could you then Absolutely. fill in a whole space? Absolutely. Well, the ones that I did... Um, Last time I was here, they are all completely filled in. Oh, oh so. look at those, they're gorgeous. <laughs> so the reason... Right, uh, well, hang on, before, be, before I go on to those, right, is... Uh, no, no, hang on, do you, want, do you want to do, Hannah? Do you want to go on to those or do you want to carry on with those? Oh, OK, if you want those, if you want those, we can go onto the website. You go to the website and you search Yarn Lane website, remember, Yarn Lane website, and what... Put in <laughs> punch. <laughs> Oh, there they are. So now, in the... Oh, look at that cat. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> okay, so, um, is, are they in the kit? You get everything like you get Same, in this one. everything. But so you get the yarn. And yeah. the reason they're more expensive is because they're bigger and you get more, more yarn, yarn because you've got hoop, the background. Exactly, and you get a different punch needle that's bigger as well. But that looks different to this. This, this looks more... Oh, the tool looks different, does it? The tool looks different. It's just a single one, though, isn't it, that one? Is it the tool uh, the same? It's, it's, I'll show you. I've got brought it with me. It's um, it's adjustable still, but it is just a single one. You don't get the, the different needles to change, but right. you can still change So it's the just the width it. that you need to do that one. Exactly. So you could only carry on using that pen. I'm calling it a pen, but to <laughs> do like that size. And what size is that yarn well, there? Well, that yarn's Aaron weight, but this one actually can be used for chunky as well and super chunky. <laughs> chunky and super chunky. <laughs> Me and Hannah. <laughs> right, Hannah's got a question very quickly. No, no, because if you buy the kit, you make that kit, but then you must be able to buy... You've, you've then got the tool. You don't need to buy another no, kit after that. No. You could then just buy the yarn and the hoop is exactly. and the things like that. The, are they on linen as well? What are they on? These are on monk's cloth. Oh, so what? It's a monk's cloth, which is like a bit like an Ada. It's Mug or monk? Monks. I've never heard of that. In all the years, I've never <laughs> yeah, heard of that. Yeah, so it's, um, it's kind of woven crossways and it comes in different counts. So, so in a way, like that one's Ada. easier to do because you've got, do you follow the holes? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's that bit easier to do. But either kit would be suitable for beginners, but this uh, is just a bigger yeah. scale. They're gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're on the Yarn Lane website if you want those. Same technique. Exact same technique. Yeah, is exact it? same technique. So everything I've taught you can be used for that as well. So the cats, the, the, the black bits on the cat are the fuzzy bits from the other side. Yes. And from the other side. Yeah, the and the clouds on the rainbow. And How yeah. brilliant. Right, I've got to ask you though, why have I got a glue gun and glue gun sticks then? So when you come to finish off on the back of them... Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Is there anything else you want to talk to about, about that? About no, that no, hoop? that's no, no. fine. Yeah. I mean, you've got the idea of how you do um, the lettering. Yeah. The leaves you were doing the same way as the petals. Can you, um, can you use glittery wool? 
Absolutely, yeah, definitely. It'd look really pretty. I don't know what I'm making in my head. I don't know what I'm <laughs> making in my head, but I've got glittery one and all sorts of things. But but so you can use as long as it's a different, as long as it's the right size yarn for your tool. Exactly. So you'd need that big tool for chunky knit and super chunky. Yes. But you'd need our tool, and we've got today's kit for. Yeah. Embroidery for anything floss. Anything finer, yes, yeah, embroidery yeah. floss. And is that it, or are there DK. more? Are there hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of no, different No, there tools? is. With the punch needle, you either have your, they call this regular, yeah. or your fine. And that's not. And that's, that's so it. Hannah's worried that she's going to have to buy 20 different. No, uh, the, that's, yeah. I mean, so that I think if you go for one that's bigger and one that's smaller, okay. you've got all perfect, the tools perfect. you need for any project, really. And the fact that they're adjustable, the fact you can change the height of the loop is brilliant. Okay, brilliant. So tell me why I need a glue gun then. So you need a glue gun. It's not essential, but when it comes to finishing it off, the nice thing about the embroidery hoops is you've got a frame there to use. Right. You, know, you can use the, the hoop as a frame, which is what I've done with those three pictures. Yeah. So you literally trim around, leaving about a centimetre of fabric, or maybe two, mm -hmm. and then I used my glue gum around the edges. The thing is, a, a lot, the thing is, it's not, you don't have to buy a glue gun just for this. Mandy Shaw used the glue gun to put the hair on her dollies and all sorts of things honestly, like that. Yeah. They're, they're just such a great investment. So, you've got a so, glue gun, so hang on, so you cut it about a centimetre, pushed it around and glue gunned it down? Exactly, yeah. Perfect. And that's all I did to finish it off. You can sew all the way around, but I just, I think that's neat and it, it is effective yeah. and easy. <laughs> The glue gun, high temperature. Um, you must only use the you only use the glue that comes with it. Hang on, let me just read this here. Use all temperature glue only. Um, now, has it got a little stand in there? I don't know if it's got a stand in there. Can't work out the stand there, but it's got a plug on it and everything like that. Uh, anyway, how much is it? Oh, ten ninety nine. That's good. Ten ninety nine. It's a nice one. That's a good sturdy one. That one. And then I've got refills as well here, very quickly. Mini. Oh, two ninety nine. I'd, I'd I'd buy lots of those if I were you. Not telling you what to do. Not telling you how to spend your money. Okay, very quickly. Let me recap the kits I've got, and then we can go back and maybe do some more stitching. Right. So starting. Okay, we're starting with Hope the Snowdrop. Single figures in this one. Now in it you get your um, what what's that called? A tool, a pen. Punch needle. Oh, punch needle. Just, punch yeah. needle. None of those. You get a full instructions. You get the hoop with the linen in it with the drawing already on, the hope drawing on it. And you get your thread. Now, this is four ply. Four ply. Four ply. Four ply. And you get your white, your green, and your black in there. Nice, gorgeous. And you get the little calico bag. Oh, no, you can get that. You get the little calico bag to put it all in. Oh, yes, you could needle punch your calico bag afterwards, couldn't you? <laughs> right, that's the hope one. Daffodil is joy to the world. I won't take everything out, but I will take the threads out of this one. Or yarn, not threads, yarn. He says. Mm. Here they go, there you go, there you go. Orange and the black in there. That's the, that's the daffodil one there. And that will make this one. You do get everything else in it. I just haven't bothered getting it out. You get everything else in your little bag there. And then last but not least, you get your primulas. There you go. Love is getting more popular, apparently. It's missed me out. Oh, there's only 12 loves left. There's only 12 loves left. And you get a bumblebee on love as well. Right, okay. And in there, you get all one. You get your threads, your needle punch Thingy. Is it good for getting rid of stress? Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't like to say. Um, there's only 12 loves left, and that's at uh, just gone quarter to one on Wednesday. Oh, I've got to ask you another question. Okay, that we've had a question. Is it coming in an email? Okay, Hannah's lost the email, but she saw that an email just came in saying, what are the best fabrics to buy to do this on after you've used your kit? So look for a craft linen. A, li a linen is really good for the fine punch needle. Right. So that's what this is. So anything like that. Right, but, but we also think that 
What would you? What did you just say? You want to try it on denim? Denim. I think it'd be amazing on denim. Calico. Calico. What was now? What was that f fabric called in the bigger one? Monk's. That's monk's cloth. Monk's so cloth. So that's. I mean, if you've got, if you want to do it in a bigger scale, this one's maybe the monk's cloth, right. which is a much um, looser weave. Yes. So because this tool is really quite thick. So it punches through it nicely. But for the finer one, you can be really experimental. Yeah, because you wouldn't want to use that thick one going through denim because you're going to cut. Yeah, it would just make massive holes. Massive I holes think. in it, yeah, yeah, exactly. And the same with the linen. If you try to go through that with the thick one, it just makes big holes. But because you've got the. Now, this is the medium sized needle that comes in the kit. You've got a finer one again. If you so, want to do really yeah, delicate, anything that delicate. You can get a sewing needle through. Um, I would how do you do it? Very quickly, how do you do the bumble? How do you do the bumblebee? So, how do you do it? Just explain. Oh, for the bumblebee, I outlined him in black first. Right, so the okay. whole We're just thing. Coming in on you now. Yeah. So, so his, his, his little head is black, and then I did the outline and the wings and the stripes. All in black. All in black. Mm -hmm. And then I turned it over just like I did for the center of the daffodils that I showed you. And from the back, I wanted him to be fluffy. So from the back, I did the fluffy body. Oh, okay, the yes. Oh, yes and there. the black. Oh, the thing is, it's such a beautiful, you'd think it was a really, in, if, if you gave that to somebody, they'd think, oh, have they done those beautiful, yes. neat, yeah. tidy stitches and everything? That's what I like about it. You yeah. can achieve that effect, but it's just, it just feels so much easier. And what question do you just want to ask? Oh, there they all are. There they all are. There's the three. Now, obviously, you only get one of those through 24 and 19. You choose love, hope, or joy. Did you just ask another question? Oh, hang on. Go on then. Oh, it's on the bottom. Right. Is this suitable for a visually impaired? I do crochet. Many thanks from Linda. Linda, I think if you can um, crochet, you'll be absolutely fine with this. Um, as I say, I was holding it up nearer to my face, but if you've got, I don't know if you use a special craft light to put some extra shine, some extra light on it. From our eight o'clock hour today. Um, oh, because right. the, the only thing I'd be worried about for Linda is the actual threading bit, because crocheting, you've yes. just got your hook and your yarn, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, so I, don't, I mean, you might want to even a magnifying glass or something to be able to see this um, yeah. eye. I don't know. I mean, I suppose a guide would be if you can thread something like a darning needle, yes. then you should be fine with threading yes. this. And also, the packet comes with those amazing, you know what I mean? And those yeah. are brilliant for threading. Exactly. And, you, and you thread your needle and your tool with that sort yeah. of thing. So it's not like you've got to sit and do like a thread. No, you haven't got to get it through. And you might find the first time it's a bit fiddly, but then you'll get the knack of it. And of course. so um, I think it should be fine. Yeah, obviously I, I we don't know, we don't know what, yeah, exactly. I don't know, but we don't know what your impairment yeah, is. So it might be that you'll be absolutely fine with it. I'd give it a go. And if give you can, you know, if you can crochet with the four millimeter hook or a three millimeter hook, I'd imagine again yeah. that you'd be fine. Brilliant. And Hannah? Okay, more than half of every single kit is gone. And the most popular is hope. Oh, hope. snowdrop hope is the most popular. Yeah, gorgeous. There they are. If you're watching at a later date, uh, we do have the bigger kits. These are the only three we have in this size at the moment, yes, aren't they? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and then just type in punch on the website. Or Adventures in Crafting, that might be a better one. Mm -hmm. Oh no, go to Adventures in Crafting because then we'll see all of your, yeah, not just your needle punching, <laughs> but true. all your other ones. Um, you want what? Yeah, she, she's very, sorry about Hannah today, she's very aggressive. <laughs> she was so rude to, to Claire, the, the lighting lady, then she was rude to Elliot this morning, oh, so she's, really she's having a bad week. <laughs> um, right, is there anything else we need to know about this before we go? No, I was just going to show you with the love one that I, I put a bit more detail into this right, one. Right, okay. So, um, I've put a little bit of edging around in, a, in the purple. So you've got the purple and the pink, or lilac and the pink, in with the primroses. Yes. primroses. Um, so I just got a bit more creative with using layers of colour. So I put a little bit of purple around the centre of the flower. But that's just the same stitch, isn't it? Exactly it's just, you've just done stitch. one There's single no more to line. Stitches, yeah. So really, you know, you again, you be as creative as you like with it. You can, you can style it however you like. And again, with this one, that I was working up last night, I've made the centre of the flower fluffy. Oh, okay. So you can get, again, play about with those textures, whether you want it to be loopy or flat or combination. Yes. So oh, love's about to sell out. <laughs> love's about to sell out. Oh, oh. I, I have to say, I like those non-fluffy. Yes. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They because they're such a dainty little flower they in the garden. Really dainty, aren't they? I mean, they do look gorgeous that side as well. But yeah. I just think for the primrose, primroses, they look gorgeous and and neat. But I think I would, I do love the fluffy side of both. It's of those. one of those projects that once you've done it one way, you think, oh, perhaps I'll try it the other way. Yes, yeah, quite exactly. Trying it exactly. that way now. So we yeah. need to get we need to get into Yarn Lane all of these things to buy don't we so that people that once they've great. got yeah. your yeah. your because once they've got the needle punch and everything exactly we need the hoops and we need the linen yeah. so people can do more projects and the thing is obviously if you use your hoop as a frame you haven't got it to use again so yes, you know yeah, yeah. it's good to buy more but yeah, and glitter we have to get some glitter, glitter, wool glitter yarn. is there such thing as glitter wool there's there loads of glittery yarn out there. Oh, is loads. there? Yeah, yeah, and shiny and <laughs> all sorts. It's weird. It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> whole it's, new it's world. Something, it is a whole new world to me. <laughs> I know nothing about this side of um, sewing or anything like that at all. Right, you've had so much love come in. Oh, loads of lovely so messages. Much, and I really enjoyed it. When are you in next? I know? am in on the 3rd of February doing Third. crochet again. And what time. day of the week's that? That is Wednesday as well. Oh, that's right. That'll most probably be me then because I do Tuesday, Wednesdays and Saturdays oh, normally. So that'd be nice. Um, right, um, do I need to go through the kits? Again, just the numbers of the kits before we go. Love's about to sell out. Isn't that funny? Because Hope was been in the lead all show. It's got one left. One left in Hope. <laughs> oh, so what about Joy? Oh, that's because they're all thinking of Joy Edgerton, aren't they? And they're thinking, oh, I'm not buying that for Joy. Oh, I'll have to buy one of those then for Joy. Joy's not as, not as popular, still popular, but not as popular as Hope and Love. That's because we all need a bit of hope and love. We, we're we attracting do. what we need, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Aw. Listen, thank you ever so much for thank coming you. in. Make sure you check out your baskets. Now, when's Yarn Lane on next then? What day of the week is it? Say Wednesday. It must be Friday. That's not me. It must be Vix on Friday. Knitted Accessories with Catherine Wright on Friday. Oh, I've got it on Saturday as well, because I'm in Saturday and Sunday. Well, I'm in Saturday all normally, but I'm also doing Sunday. I'm doing what? Crocheted socks and crocheted books. Oh, a book about crochet. Right, I'm going to go. Thank you for your company this morning. I'm sorry Hannah's been in such a vile mood. We will let her pack everything away on her own so she can just calm down while I eat my boiled egg. Thank you ever so much You're for welcome, coming all the way you. in. Uh, and I'll see you on, I'm back in on Saturday and Sunday this week. <laughs>